Hello, old buddy. I'm going to tell you some things about history and time and all that shit. So, I saw this video. I'll tell you a little story about a woman named Ida. The story goes back a long, long ways. So, my grandmother was what you would call an entrepreneur. We grew up poor. We didn't have shit. She drug her family from the south to California way before I was born. Grandma had that tough, true grit. She was a real woman. And she raised men. And she, she did all she could to, to better her family. We were poor. We were on assistance. Now, my grandmother had the, um, uh, I don't know, forthright or whatever. She had the, the ability to look forward, put it like that. And since she was smart enough to look forward, she learned so much from the South. When she moved to California, you know, they had my Uncle Jesse's military pension and all that shit. They found a place out in Rodeo, California. I don't know what it's, the name of the apartment complex was. We called it the Projects. Now, they'd lived in Rodeo for a while. They lived at the old projects and then the new projects. I don't, I don't know how long that she had lived there in the town, but she'd been there a while. Rodejo is close to Vallejo, and if you don't know, Vallejo is next to Benicia, it used to be the capital of California. That's close enough. I'm going to let you get to my location. Well, I tell you, but I can't tell everybody else. So, now, we lived in the projects when we were poor. My grandmother was smart enough to understand the significance of a dollar. So what my grandmother would do was pay her rent three months in advance. Think. She started off with military pension. She paid her month rent three months in advance. The assistance we got, she would loan it to people throughout the neighborhood who didn't get assistance or whose jobs wasn't cutting enough mustard. In other words, I'm going to tell you as simple as I can. A hundred costs you a hundred and twenty. Two hundred costs you two fifty. You get the picture? Grandma loaned people money. I grew up wearing hand-me-downs. People in the community treated me like shit. All the other little kids around me treated me like shit. I got six pair of pair, a uh, six pair of pants, six shirts, two pair of boots every year for school. The work boots, the Levi's jeans, the Pendleton shirt. That's it. Grandma was a loan shark. We struggled, we survived, we ate. A lot of people in the neighborhood did not know that grandma was floating the hood. She floated the hood off welfare. She flipped her checks to survive. Let's fast forward to present day times. See, I did this video twice. I don't know what happened to the first one. Maybe it didn't upload. But I think it did. You know, I'm paranoid about how YouTube does it. My video is floating around there in cyberspace somewhere. Somebody's got it on their site. What have you. Whatever. That's that. If you see that video, you know it's me. Flag that ass. So, um, I was younger. And I'll never forget, I was standing at my mom's house. She said, man, you ain't working so long. You got to do something, man. You got to go get some GA. Drop out of school, didn't have no money, bro. Tired. Quick get get rich quick schemes not working. They still don't. Forty years old, they ain't working. Let me just tell my story now. So I got general assistance. $178 a month, man. $54 in food stamps. Here's the logic in what you saw when you went to the store. When you get only $178 a month. $54 food stamps. Some people have drug problems. They'll sell the food stamps. Some people have economic problems. They'll go spend $178 on some powder, cook it up, serve it back. 
double or triple your money. Go back and get another package, so on and so forth. When you get got, somebody take all your shit, what do you have? You have $178 coming on the first to re-up, recoup, and get back out in the street. What you probably saw the first time was someone who bought somebody's welfare card. Or it could have been somebody's overtaker, overtaker, overseer. Because some people are so doped out that the government don't even trust them with their own food stamp card. So they got to have a payee or something. You could have saw somebody's payee. The second incident, the lady at 7-Eleven. You know just as well as I do, a poor person don't want to be poor no more. How she got that stack, I can't even com comment. I don't know. She could be getting welfare in the daytime and dancing at night. We don't know. What I'm trying to tell you, tell you is, Father, I agree with 99% of that video. But that 1% I don't agree with. Now, people make choices. Now, I liked the video, don't get me wrong, else I wouldn't have put it to five stars like I always do your videos. Maybe I'm just a sucker for your video. No, I'm licking my lips again. Remember when I lick my lips, I'm, people think I'm trying to hit on their women's and shit. So, um, what I want to say is this. The sight of people shouldn't disturb you, man. Because you've seen it all. Don't let that shit get to you. Because I'm pretty sure there are some things that you've done. Maybe maybe you were at the game. You see your boy Johnny. Hey, Johnny, come on up here. Johnny, way in the back of the room. Johnny walks all the way up, gets in line, right next to you. You guys are jaw jabbing. Yeah, 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 what's up, Johnny? What's up, John? I mean, judgment. You guys are talking, talking, talking. Next thing you know, you and Johnny go into the game. Johnny just walked past 115 people to stand next to you to get into the game. You guys are going to watch the first pitch go down. You guys are going to watch tip off. All those people behind you have just got pissed off. And the first thing they did was got home, got on YouTube, and said exactly what I'm saying right now. I'm fucking in line. Just got my beer. And I'm standing there. And this fucking dude and his buddy, he fucking calls his buddy over. And this motherfucker walks all the way to the fucking front of the line. They fucking talk for three seconds, and bam, they're in the fucking door. Don't you know I missed the fucking tip-off? Perception. What you saw threw you off, man. You were having a rough day, and once again, look at these fucking people. You know, I go to work, bust my motherfucking hump. I can barely buy this goddamn cheese. And look at these motherfuckers. $375 worth of food. $60 worth of beer. That a bitch. Wild of money like that in welfare cards. Man. It's worse than what you think it is. And it's worse than whatever I can tell you it is. But throughout history, man, people have been trying to make ends meet with what they get for free. Somebody once called me a hypocrite. I've done a lot of bad things for money. I've done a lot of good things since I've done bad things to make it up. But you can never erase bad. So I don't really want to go to all the bad things I did. But I've done some things to make money that I'm not proud of. But when the push comes to the shove, and when that shit gets close to that fan, when all hope is lost, and when gas is $9 a gallon, we're all going to be thinking about how to get some help. We're all going to need some help. Because one thing that no one is addressing is the fact that wages are going down, the cost of living is going up, and don't nobody seem to give a fuck about the average Joe anymore. If the average Joe is going to allow himself to be squeezed in the middle, pushed at the top, and kicked on the bottom, then the average Joe is going to get fucked. And let me tell you, buddy, it's a whole bunch of us right now, bent over, waiting. Like I said, with the tear dropping right down out the eye. Because we can't start over, and we can't get ahead. All we got forward to look, all we have to live forward to is what I'm gonna say now. We've all been tubed.